Cybersecurity is about protecting computers and the data they contain. We can define it as the processes, practices and technologies designed to protect networks, computers, programs and data from attack, damage or unauthorized access. Unfortunately, there are cyber attacks happening all the time and businesses and individuals have to be careful to protect themselves from these threats. Malware stands for malicious software and covers a variety of computer programs that perform attacks on a system. We most commonly know of the term virus, but this is in fact just one type of malware. Viruses are a malicious program which is used to harm the operation of a computer system such as by deleting files. As the name suggests, viruses attach themselves to a legitimate piece of software or file, or infects them, and spreads from computer to computer when that file is shared, such as via an email attachment or using a portable storage device. Trojans are where malicious code is disguised as a legitimate piece of software but contains a harmful payload. Users will download and install the program thinking it will provide a legitimate function, but behind the scenes it is causing damage, such as installing keyloggers or adding you to a botnet. Spyware is malware that gains access to a system and works in the background to monitor a user's actions and steal data. The information is then commonly used for further attacks or as part of identity fraud and bank fraud. We can protect against malware through a variety of different tools. We learned about firewalls in a previous lesson, which can prevent malware from infecting your computer system. However, the most common method of preventing malware is through the use of antivirus software, which we'll learn about later in this course. Of course, nothing can beat training and good practices. Most malware infections are caused by out-of-date software or user error, such as by opening an email attachment from an unknown source. By training staff on staying safe and making them aware of best practice, we can prevent most malware infections. Social engineering allows attackers to gain access to a system without using technical hacking techniques. Instead, using human psychology and social techniques in order to manipulate individuals into handing over private information. Social engineering doesn't even need to involve technology at all and can be done face to face or over the phone. Phishing usually takes place via an email or phone service and involves an electronic message being sent to an individual containing some form of request, often to click a link or return information. The attacker usually pretends to be a legitimate business. The goal is to either get the victim to reveal information, such as login or bank details, or to infect their device with a virus that will allow for data to be stolen later. Pretexting, also known as blagging, is very similar to phishing, but is more targeted at specific individuals or businesses. The attacker creates a scenario, a pretext, typically which involves the attacker pretending to be someone in authority in order to trick an individual into revealing private information. This could be by email, but could also be by phone call, text or face to face. Shoulder surfing is another form of social engineering where the attacker observes an individual in a physical location in order to obtain information. For example, looking over someone's shoulder. This technique can be used to gain information such as PIN numbers or passwords. We can protect ourselves from phishing attempts through the use of email filters which will catch most spam emails. Spam being unsolicited bulk emails which many phishing attempts are. However, this won't catch all phishing attempts. Much like with malware, preventing social engineering is best done through training and good practice. If staff know how to detect and avoid social engineering attempts, then we can avoid falling for these tricks. For example, you should know that phishing emails can be detected as they will often contain the following. The email is sent from an address that doesn't match the company's actual website domain, the email is poorly formatted and contains spelling and grammar errors. There is a generic greeting line, e.g. Dear Customer. There are suspicious links or attachments in the email. And the email tries to give a false sense of urgency. 
Weakened and default passwords are always a threat to an organization's systems. It leaves us open to unauthorized access by hackers through brute force attacks. A brute force attack is when an attacker loops through a dictionary of known passwords or lists of ordinary words and then tries all of them or combinations of them to identify a password. This can be done manually by just typing in various passwords, but is usually performed by programs that automatically try various passwords until access is gained. Using modern computers, a typical brute force attack can take no more than a few seconds, though this does depend on the complexity of your password. Ultimately, the goal is to gain access to a system so that the attacker can read, edit or steal data. This could be used for further crime like blackmail or bank fraud. So, malware is software designed to cause harm to you or your computer. Examples of malware are viruses, trojans and spyware. Social engineering allows attackers to gain information from a system and access to a system without any technical hacking techniques. Phishing is a form of social engineering which tricks the target into clicking a link or downloading a file through social engineering techniques. Pretexting involves creating a fake scenario in order to trick someone into revealing private information. Shoulder surfing involves physically observing individuals in order to obtain information. Weakened default passwords are vulnerable to unauthorized access via brute force attacks. A brute force attack is where a program tries a combination of letters and numbers to guess a password.